could see the it looks on everyone's faces like we are in the Premier League. Russell Martin, the stand First, when we when we arrived from vacation, and you could see the look on everyone's faces, like uh, we are in the Premier League, and how how much it meant to everyone. Uh, especially for me, I have the same uh, feeling that I, I had when I first arrived. Uh, that I knew I was going to play Premier League. It's, 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 I think it's the biggest uh, the biggest you can achieve in football for me. So. It's going to be it's going to be very exciting uh, when we start again uh, and playing the games and playing against good teams, top teams. So really looking forward to it. You obviously want to show the Gaffa and uh, and everyone that you you want to get to the team, and that's where it starts for the season. So I think that's mainly that's what it's about. Uh, uh, tr to try and be at the, at the, in the great shape as possible to, to be in the team. You can see us having massage now because uh, <laughs> we are struggling. We have, to, we have to cope with, as you said, uh, with the heat, uh, double sessions. Uh, this, this period we are in, this, I don't think if you ask any footballer if they want to be in this period for <laughs> a long, a long for a while they would say no, but uh, we have to go through it and uh, we, we, we have to get through it to be, to be fit for the season. So it's been, it's been tough, but um, I think all the players uh, have been uh, in a super good uh, attitude and, uh, and then they've been training very well. It's a different league, it's uh, different teams. Um, so I think we have to adjust in some games, but Hopefully we'll keep our attacking mindset going to games. But if we do what what the gaffer wants and what is required from us, we can win games. But it's it's going to be really difficult. But we we just have to have to be ourselves and and then go for it. We're looking to make sure that we put in performances we're proud of, um, that the fans are proud of, um, and that, you know, I guess show what we're about. Like we, we want to have an identity that we're hard to play against. No team works harder than us. Um, we want to make sure we impose ourselves on games and attack teams. And I think, you know, whoever we play against, we're not just going to sit back and, and wait for something to happen. We're always going to try and be proactive. I think. Certainly, th this squad's probably been different from any other squad that I've sort of been involved with as a player or, or managed, because um, they were relatively relaxed until games started to sort of happen, particularly the closer you got to the start of the season. So I'd probably say that sort of competition that you tend to find in that sort of competitive edge um, with each other probably started more so about two weeks before the first game of the season. There were two opening games where we felt, why, why not? Why can't we go and win these games? I think before in the Premier League, you know, it was just sort of how to, to not get beat. The aim of the game now is just to win it, and because that mentality is in the whole squad, you know, we've got players on the bench and in the squad, and in, from the starting eleven, you know, everyone wants to be a winner, and I think that sort of sets the tone. So we win first, and then we don't lose.
a bit of sort of trepidation, I think, you go into it, not knowing what to expect, really. But I think confidence, you know what I mean? I think we were confident in what we'd been doing. The boys were just really excited. They just wanted to get going. Um, throughout the whole season in the in the championship, there were times where I think we'd we'd sort of blown our chances. So once we did get promoted, you know, the massive high of, of, of the playoffs, um, we just knew that the next aim now is to go into the Premier League and show teams why we got promoted. When you're sort of waiting for the season to start, there's always that little bit of anxiety, a little bit of cautiousness about what you're going into, how we're going to fare, because you never know if you're playing different opposition. Although we thought we'd done well in pre-season, performed well, you never, you never know how ready you are. I actually thought it was handball, so I didn't really remonstrate too much, you know, with the officials at the side as, as it sort of went in. I started to celebrate, um, but I quickly turned around and I was celebrating myself, so I thought there was obviously a problem. Um, and then, yeah, somebody says it's a free kick. But initially, my first thought was the fact that it was handball. Um, and then when I sort of found out, maybe a couple of minutes later, that it was for a high foot, I, to be honest, I couldn't believe it, really, because um, you see overhead kicks, um, or certainly scissor kicks to the side, or whatever you want to call it, on numerous occasions, and I can't ever remember any of them really being given as a sort of high foot, unless there's clean connection with the opponent, um, which there obviously wasn't. And watching it back um, was even harder to take because it was a f fantastic goal for Cameron, great bit of, sort of athleticism to get you sail up there and score. Um, and at that stage the game would have been 2-2, and we were the team really forcing and pushing the issue, and I believe that we either would have went on to win the game, or certainly took a point from the match. Um, I think the one thing you always want to use, use any motivation you can to sort of try and drive you over the line and make sure you're sort of as prepared as you can be. And the one thing I would say to the players is, is, is how about the feeling the pain after the game last week? You know, and using that motivation to make sure that we don't feel that after this game and that we come out on top and, and we go and do as well as we did last week in terms of playing, but make sure you get the result that you deserve this time. We want to go and try and win the game. Um, but I think first and foremost, when you go away from home, the onus is in the home team really to come and try and break you down. And I think a lot of the time that's played into our favour. Um, however, last season in particular, we had to go and win the games. You know, a point wasn't good enough, um, and we had to really go and set a stall out to make sure we try and get maximum points out of every game. So we'll do the exact same tomorrow. Um, to be honest, I don't really know another way to set my team up. That's the way I like my teams to play. I just couldn't have my teams being a defensive sort of type. Um, so that's exactly how we'll go about it. Here is Brady again. Pantillon save, and it's in. Russell Martin with the final touch. 
That's nice from Houlihan. Here it's Whitaker again. Well, the defenders are hitting the mark for Norwich City. Sunderland are sleeping from the throw-in. Here is Nathan Redmond. Houlihan. Redmond. 3-0. At times, me and Seb were just watching the boys in front of us and admiring the stuff they were playing. There was some really good football played, um, not just with the ball but without it. I think it was highlighted after by a lot of pundits and fans that our intensity when we weren't on the ball, getting it back and getting in people's faces. And it was just a good day, a good day for us, first win. Like I said, we're off and rolling and, and thoroughly deserved. Yeah, we'll try to get as much as we can done to make sure we're in as strong a position as we can be once the window shuts. Um, and what you tend to find is everybody wants to do their work with 24 hours to go, but as we've had six weeks, um, so every club's in the same boat. He's a big, strong number nine. You know, he can take the ball in, um, he can run, he's mobile and he's a, he's a real threat in the box and he's, he's really good in there as well, so I just hope all these things come together for him. Yeah, he's got a good track record, um, he's played Champions League football as well, so I think it's an exciting signing for us, um, but like any, any signing, you don't really know how it's going to pan out until we get him on the pitch and, and see how we go. It's a dream for me because before, I had already said I would play in Inglaterra, Aujourd'hui, c'est réalisé et je suis très content. L'entraîneur compte sur moi. Maintenant, ça dépend de moi aussi, de travailler aussi. Je crois que comme je suis venu ici, c'est à cause de lui, tu vois. C'est lui qui me voulait que je vienne ici, de jouer ici à Norwich. Je crois que maintenant, ça dépend de moi maintenant. Je suis un buteur, je marque des buts. Je vais apporter ça aussi, je vais apporter quelque chose dans les groupes. Je pense que à cause du groupe que je vais devenir encore plus fort aussi sur le terrain. I didn't really see it coming. I, was, I, was, I left my phone in my room. I was away at international duty. I left my phone in my room, went to training, walked down to the, the training complex, finished training, done my gym come back up to the room and then I just seen on my on my phone he, he, that, um, that he'd gone, you know, on Twitter I just saw it and Sky Sports app, he just said, yeah, he's, he's gone to Derby and I was just sitting there like a little bit confused, like how has this happened in the last sort of four hours? Um, but, you know, as I said, it's a fantastic move for him. I was a little bit disappointed, upset, um, especially being away, you know, I didn't really get to say, say bye to him and stuff, but we still speak. Um, I spoke to him since then and we still speak um, weekly, so no, I just wish him all the best and you know, I think that's football at the end of the day, things can happen like that. And obviously he's done big things for the club and I'm sure that he'll remain obviously in the club sort of history for a long time. I thought about how it would impact the sort of morale, if you like, of the fans, of the players, of the club. Um, and I knew there was going to be a wee bit of backlash from it, um, but I, I've got to do what I think is right. A lot of things will be reported and stories have got made up, but sometimes things are really just simple, and it was simple with Bradley. I just felt that he wasn't going to get as much game time as he would have wanted. I felt the price we were getting for him was spot on. Um, and I spoke to Bradley, and once I sort of spoke about the interest for Derby, um, Bradley wasn't fighting it to stay. So 
Um, it was no way, shape, or form was was Bradley sort of forced into leaving, and also we left under really good terms. You know, I still speak to Bradley. I've spoken to him since he's left, um, and he was a fantastic servant for me and the club while he was here. So, um, at the end of the day, it's football, it's business, and I've got to do whatever I think is right for the club, and that's exactly what I've done. I was keeping an eye on the clock, so it was just a case, I knew the directors had a flight up there at midday, so it was a case of if I can make that, I'll go up. But I was also conscious of the fact that I'd, ne I'd never want to let anyone down, um, and I was only going to do it if I felt okay. Yeah, I literally hadn't slept one bit, so I, I'd had a, a bit, bit of breakfast, I guess, if you can call it that. I had some porridge oats in a protein shake, um, and that was me, ready to get on the plane, um, and got there, and the dealer and Michael and Stefan and, and Michael Folger as well, they were great, um, the directors were superb, and uh, yeah, it was, I think they were quite surprised to see me on the plane. You know, my son's just been born, everything's great, he's healthy, um, my wife's healthy, so there was no doubt in my mind I wanted to come up and play, it was just a case of getting there and seeing how I felt once I got there, because adrenaline up to that point had, had got me through. It was almost like, I can't believe I'm, I'm doing this, you know, you just, I was, I just wanted the game to start really, because I didn't feel too good in the warm up. Um, and Nick, the sports scientist, the head of sports science was taking warm up, I think he noted that, so he was on my case a little bit, but, just felt a bit lightheaded and uh, um, just was desperate for the game to start and something to tune into and concentrate. Because obviously up to then it was all a bit frantic, a bit hectic. I was late to the ground, just desperate to get the game started at that point and um, yeah, just to get going really and hoping that I'd make it through and not let anyone down. Russell Martin leading his Norwich side into a venue of legends and this is what all the hard work was all about for them last year. What seemed improbable when Alec Neal took over became reality. Oh, Danny Ings could have a real opportunity here, which he takes superbly. Big five, ten minutes or so now for Norwich. Can't afford to lose another one. Minulay through traffic, helped on by Martin, and in! Russell Martin has stunned Anfield! He has plenty of reasons to celebrate. To, to go up and play was enough, and then to score, you know, it was, I was aware straight away of how big that was for for uh, for me and, and for my family as well. Great story for us, for us all. Awesome feeling. I'd done about four celebrations in one, I think, a terrible celebration. It's just all emotion was coming out, and my uncle and stuff was in the crowd, so I knew where he was sitting. So it was, it was yeah, the feeling I can't really describe. You know, it's complete euphoria for a couple of seconds, and well, a bit longer than that even. Um, then I had to get my breath back and relax a little bit and get back in position and make sure that we, uh, as a team, held on to, to, to a good point. Glance of the watch from Anthony Taylor, he's seen enough. Another afternoon of frustration and disappointment for Brendan Rodgers. But Alex Neal's Norwich have produced another very effective and impressive away performance. Norwich's goal machine of late, Russell Martin, struck for the third time in some style to equalise for Norwich City. We've had a good start, but that's ultimately all it is at the moment. You know, we've got to continue um, with the momentum we've sort of picked up so far, but also we've got to improve, you know, because I think once the league starts to settle down, I think anybody can have a good start. 
is can you maintain it over the course of a season? I believe we can. I think the players believe they can. And the one thing I'll guarantee is we'll do everything we possibly can to make sure we fight for every single point and every single ball in each game. Um, and I think the spirit that we've got will take us a long, long way. I took over Hamilton. Nobody said we would get promoted. We got promoted. Everybody said we would get relegated. We were third in the league. Top, I think, in October. Um, and I took over Norwich. Everybody was a bit sceptical we'd manage to go up because we were sitting seventh at the time. We went up and now everybody thinks we're going to go back down. So it doesn't really matter. You know, everybody's got their opinion and people will sort of say what they like. At the end of the day, it's, it's about what you, what you can produce. I'm not really much a talker and say I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I know exactly how I want to approach it um, and I'll do my very best to make sure that we're as equipped as we can be and that we'll, we'll put everything we possibly can into being as successful as we can. Now, whether that means that we stay up with a point or we finish in the top 10, I don't know, you know, but um, that'll be determined by how we do in each individual game between now and the end of the season.